Hello, MGA people. This is Terry Kato working at the Hot Springs Research Institute of Kanaga Prefecture, Japan. Today, I'd like to talk about recent developments of GNSS V system for uh, tsunami and other geohazards disaster mitigation. Before going to the, our project, I'd like to uh, say something about the tsunami itself. As you see here, this is a seismicity, global seismicity map, and many large earthquakes occur around this, the uh, Pacific Rim. And th those large earthquakes generate large tsunamis. So the people living in this area are always facing a large risk of tsunami. So uh, how can we uh, use utilize GNSS to monitor and mitigate tsunamis. This is a very uh, simple uh, moving picture uh, showing you how tsunami is generated and propagated. If the earthquake occurs at the seafloor, then tsunami is generated here and propagated to the land. The one thing is that tsunami is very much exaggerated when the tsunami is approaching to the land. So that is the reason why tsunami is so dangerous. So uh, in order to monitor tsunami in advance, it arrives at coast. The one single technology is using a buoy. And if we put GPS on top of buoy and data is sent to, to land, the people can monitor the tsunami arrive arrivals in advance uh, of the tsunami arrival to the coast so that people can evacuate from tsunami. We started this project in 1997 with very small prototype and the experiment is uh, successful. So uh, then we uh, made up uh, the bigger buoys for deploying to the open ocean. Fortunately, this buoy was able to uh, detect the real tsunami. The, it was uh, generated by 2001 Peru earthquake, and the, uh, this is the original record uh, of tsunami uh, buoy, uh, sorry, a GNSS buoy. Actually, the original record has the much higher amplitude of wind waves of about one meter, so that the uh, actually, the tsunami amplitude was only 10 centimeters or so. So you cannot see tsunami at all in this original record. However, one thing is that the period of tsunami is much, much longer than these window waves. So if we apply low pass filtering to the record, then we can get uh, this uh, results. And you can see the tsunami very clearly. The, we compared the record with tide gauge record, which is shown here. And you can see clearly the about 10 centimeter of amplitude waves. Uh, so we are now confident that the G GNSS buoy can detect tsunami even if it is 10 centimeters or so. In this old system, we used the baseline mode RTK GPS, real-time kinematic uh, GPS. Then we used, we required base station to record GPS simultaneously with buoy GPS and made an relative analysis. So the buoy position uh, can be estimated relative to the position of land. In order to ensure the accuracy to be a few centimeters, that there was a distance limitation of less than 20 kilometers. If the distance becomes longer, then the, uh, the accuracy uh, gets uh, lower. So, and also the data is transmitted to the land using the ground-based radio system. But this is a system that we uh, used. Now, uh, the government uh, adopted our system and deployed GNSS buoys around the Japanese coast since around 2008. And this, the, the purpose of this uh, network is called NAUFA, is uh, to monitor wave, and the, the name is called NAUFA system. 
And uh, until 2011, uh, they uh, established about 15 GNSS buoys around the Japanese coast. So it was able to detect the Tokoki tsunami in 2011. And the, these are the records of uh, tsunami at that time. The earthquake occurred 2.46 p.m. in local time. And then the buoys began to sudden uplift in, uh, right after 3 p.m., about uh, 16 uh, or 17 minutes after the earthquake. So the JM people uh, were able to uh, they update the tsunami alert to, uh, from uh, 3 to 6 meters to more than 10 meters. So it was before the tsunami arrives at the coast. However, tsunami arrived at the coast only a few uh, minutes after the, this up, uh, update of tsunami alert, and it was too late for people to evacuate. It was really shocking, but uh, we had to think that buoys need to be placed much, much further from the coast to, uh, for the people to evacuate uh, from tsunami. So we decided to improve the system. So we decided to uh, implement two new uh, technologies for the GNSS buoy. One is the, to avoid to give up the relative positioning because RTK GPS has a distance limit to 20 kilometers. So now we decided to implement so-called precise point positioning with ambiguity resolution, PPPAR. If we use this, uh, the algorithm, we could get a few centimeters accuracy at any point. Uh, and also we decided to implement satellite data transmission. The, if we um, uh, combine these techniques, I think the, these technologies may resolve the problem of deploying GNSS buoys at far offshore. So we did, uh, began a new uh, experiment. So this is our uh, system that we are now using. In, in order to get the high accuracy uh, by, for using PPP, is the, uh, we need a precise orbit clocks of GNSS satellites. So what we have to do first is to produce uh, the precise orbits and clocks. Uh, so we decide to use GeoNet for this purpose. And those data are sent to, to the buoy through the satellite communication link. Then the analysis is made on the buoy in real time using these uh, collection terms. Then the resultant coordinates are sent back to land for the uh, 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 disseminating data through internet. Now, this is a present uh, system, but we are uh, trying to uh, implement QZSS for sending the precise orbits and clocks because uh, QZSS has a capability of sending uh, those collection data called Madoka uh, by itself. So this, uh, if we use this uh, system, uh, we do not have to use uh, satellite uplink, so it reduces the cost of satellite communication link. But this is a future plan. So this is a result uh, by this kind of system. We put that buoy about 40 kilometers uh, from the tip of Ash Cape Ashizuri in the southwest of Japan. We put a base station in the mountain area uh, of Kochi Prefecture. Uh, but this is this uh, position can be ar arbitrarily. Uh, selected in somewhere anywhere in the Japanese islands. Uh, this base is used for sending the, and receiving the data uh, for the satellite's uh, communication. And on the right hand side is a result uh, of this uh, system. The, we actually used two types of uh, data analysis alg algorithms, uh, but both of them, are in, uh, this the lower figure shows PPPAR, the upper one is so-called PVD, and both of them uh, provided the uh, mostly identical answer for uh, coordinate, uh, coordinates. So we think that we can use this kind of system for monitoring uh, sea, uh, sea surface change. 
Uh, one thing I should note is that in this kind of uh, the situation, we need multi-GNSS uh, environment, which is indispensable for stable continuous operation. If the number of the GNSS is uh, getting less, then the uh, stability of the uh, coordinate estimation is uh, getting lower and lower. So uh, we require multi-GNSS environment. Uh, we also added one more uh, special features on, uh, for this system, which is a GNSS acoustic system for observing washer bottom cluster movements. This is the, the combination of the both GNSS and acoustic waves for estimating uh, the ocean bottom the sensors. Actually, uh, we used three transponders uh, for uh, getting distance from the the buoy at the ship to the to the transponders to estimate the center of this triangle, and which is uh, determined in a few centimeters accuracy. And actually, this is already uh, established in the Japanese islands. And they, because they use ships, they can only uh, observe the point uh, just a few times a year. But still, even, uh, even so, if you accumulate data more than 10 years, you can clearly see how the, these positions move. And this is provide us very important information on the cluster deformation of the seafloor, which is used for the earthquake analysis. Now, what we are thinking is to uh, replace this vessel with buoy, then we can make this kind of monitoring rather continuously, which provide us more uh, data and we can find out very precise change of cluster deformation from time to time at the seafloor. And we also uh, get uh, some other uh, additional data from uh, GNSS uh, on the buoy. One is uh, tropospheric zenith day, which can be converted to water vapor in the atmosphere, and this it can be used for numerical weather prediction. And another one is total electron content in the ionosphere, and it can be it can be used for monitoring uh, the ionosphere, and it can be used for space weather monitoring, uh, and it is very important for the ionosphere research groups. So in Summing up all of these kind of things, if you have only one buoy, we can monitor even the sea bottom cluster movement, sea surface for tsunami and wind waves, uh, but also for atmosphere and ionosphere. So uh, we can uh, apply many kind of uh, things uh, through the, this kind of GNSS buoy. But of course, uh, we have several problems to be solved uh, for long-term sustainable operation of this system. The power supply is always a problem because space is limited on the buoy. So uh, we require more uh, the developments of the capability of solar panels that is very necessary. And also autonomous, autonomously operable buoy system is uh, important because if the buoy is set very far from the coast, it is difficult for people to go there for maintaining the, uh, uh, the equipments on the buoy. And of course, there are some other problems like protection from vandalism and so on, and the satellite communication system and so on. But these are all technological problems and we, we, I, really, I really hope that these uh, problems will be uh, solved in the future. So in conclusion, I should say that introduction of GNSS VRA in the ocean will further contribute to various fields in our sciences through providing new data in currently uh, vacant oceanic area. So we are, we are now proposing this kind of challenging ocean uh, GNSS network uh, within the area of uh, exclusive economic zone of Japan and uh, uh, we named it as Ocean Geonet. I really hope that this kind of network will be realized in the near future. So this is the end of my talk. Thank you very much for your attention.